Hello everyone, this is your civil girl and welcome to the next lecture of this series of interview questions. So in this video, we're going to see about theories of failure. So let's get started. And before we start, I would really appreciate it if you could smash that like button, drop me a comment and share this free program with anyone who might need it. So there are like five theories of failure. The first one is maximum principal stress theory principal strain theory, the maximum shear stress theory, strain energy theory and distortion energy theory. So distortion energy is nothing but shear strain energy. With the word failure, term factor of safety is associated with it. So what is factor of safety? Factor of safety is, I can say ultimate stress divided by allowable stress. So this is only called as factor of safety within the limit of proportionality. Based on these five theories of failure, our ultimate stress and allowable stress they will vary that's it so if we take the maximum principal stress theory so what is principal stress uh, we have already seen it in the videos so if this is my uh, say an element and this is a plane and in this plane if my shear stress is zero then it is called as principal plane any stress normal to it any stress normal to it it is called as the principal stress so an element ha can have n number of principal stresses the maximum one is called as maximum principal stress denoted by sigma one and the minimum uh, principal stress is called as uh, minor principal stress which is called as which is denoted by sigma 2. So this we already know what is meant by principal stress. So if I take my ultimate stress as sigma t star and allowable stress as sigma t then sigma t becomes sigma 1 which is nothing but our uh, major principal stress. So in our maximum principal stress theory the sigma t takes the value of sigma 1. Next is maximum principal strain. So what is strain? Strain is equal to stress by modulus of elasticity. This is the case when one stress is involved. If there are more than one stress, then we know the formula is equal to 1 by e into sigma 1 minus mu, which is our Poisson's ratio, into sigma 2 plus sigma 3. So this will be our formula. Here my sigma t value will take sigma 1 minus mu into sigma 2 plus sigma 3. So everything that I am writing here, these things you have to keep in mind. They, those are the most important things. The other things are just the concepts. That The next is maximum shear stress theory. So what is uh, shear stress? We have already seen all this also. So shear stress max is, maximum is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 2 divided by 2. So this is our maximum shear stress. So when I take a plane, say this is my uh, say major principal stress, it is denoted by sigma 1 and I have a ma minor principal stress, it is denoted by sigma 2, okay. So this major principal stress, it will always be tensile, okay. And minor principal stress, it will be compressive. So if I take tensile as positive and compression as negative, then for my tension uh, to be positive, my tensile uh, stress, it can take any value to be the maximum. It can take uh, plus 100 or plus 90, any value it can take. But compression, in order to be maximum, it has to be zero. Because uh, if it is minus 100 or minus 10, within these two, minus 10 is the maximum because it is a negative sign. Therefore, the smaller number will be maximum. So minus 10 is the maximum. Between minus 10 and zero, zero is the maximum. So, for compressive stress to be maximum, it has to be equal to 0. Now, ultimate. So, ultimate means again sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2. Whereas, uh, where sigma 1 will be equal to my sigma t minus sigma c. Because tensile is the maximum, compression is the minimum divided by 2. We already know what is compression. It is equal to 0. So, here this becomes sigma t divided by 2. So, you have to keep two things in mind. Your allowable shear stress is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2. Whereas your allowable or ultimate shear stress is equal to sigma tension divided by 2. Right? Next is uh, maximum strain energy theory. So what is strain energy? It is denoted by U. It is equal to half into stress into strain into volume. Uh, volume. So if it is strain energy per unit volume, then it will become half into stress into strain. So this is the formula for strain energy. So the thing that you have to keep in mind is uh, <coughs> here sigma t square is equal to sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square minus 2 nu sigma 1 sigma 2. Next if we come to maximum distortion energy theory let me write here. So what is our maximum distortion energy? The formula for maximum distortion is uh, 1 by 12 g into 
this is a formula for maximum shear strain energy or distortion energy but the thing that you have to keep in mind that is the formula you have to keep in mind is sigma t is equal to minus sigma 1 sigma 2 here the poisson's ratio is not present Going to our first question a certain steel has proportionality limit of 300 newton per mm square so what does this proportionality limit means this means ultimate subjected to principal stress of so and so the factor of safety according to maximum shear stress theory so what is the maximum shear stress theory according to maximum shear stress theory uh, m allowable is equal to sigma. so if i take these things now so for allowable sigma 1 minus sigma 2 so of these three things given uh, this is maximum so sigma 1 is 120 30 is minimum so sigma 2 is uh, 30 so it is in compression they have told so this becomes 120 minus sigma 2 is in compression so minus 30 this is very important you have to put minus 30 divided by 2 what is our factor of safety it is equal to alteration d2 next question all theories of failures will have the same result when so if we look at the options let me come from back for all situations of stress that is not true and when both the principal stress are numerically equal which means sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 uh, that is also not true because uh, if we look at this case if sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 then tau max will be equal to 0 so whereas for an ultimate uh, for a maximum principal stress energy tau allowable will be equal to sigma 1 you can see that it is not correct not this also next is when shear stresses act this is not even in the context so you can you don't even have to look for other things option a is your answer but when you look at the option a when one of the principal stress at a point is large in comparison to the other which means one of the principal stress means they are meaning uh, the tensile stress is larger and the compression stress is minimum which means compression stress is zero and tensile stress it can take up any positive value so in this case uh, the all the theories of failure they will nearly give the same result next question the principal stress is developed at a point r plus 60 minus 60 zero so <coughs> let me write what is my sigma 1 and sigma 2 so sigma 1 is the maximum one which is plus 60 Sigma 2 is the least one which is minus 60. So we have wrote all those things using shear strain energy theory which means distortion energy. So in distortion energy what is my formula? Sigma, the factor of safety is root 3. What is the yield stress of the material? So we have to find the yield stress. So I have my values of sigma 1, sigma 2. So let me find what is sigma t. So what is my uh, factor of safety? Factor of safety is equal to ultimate divided by allowable. So we have found what is our allowable stress. Sigma T has been found. We have to find what is this sigma T star. So sigma T star is equal to factor of safety into 60 root 3. That is 180. Your answer is option D. Next question. For ductile material, the suitable theory of failure is. So this thing you have to keep in mind. For ductile material means it will uh, take into account the uh, elastic, the plastic properties of the material. So that is in a stress strain curve. After the uh, yield point, we will have a plastic say, portion. So this plastic portion will also be taken into account. This will be taken into account only in the maximum shear stress theory that is tau max is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 we are taking it that one whereas this maximum principal stress theory where uh, sigma t is equal to sigma 1 this will be very good for brittle materials which is our next question uh, which of the following is very good for brittle materials it is maximum principal stress theory in a structural member there are perpendicular tensile stresses of so and so what is the equivalent stress in simple tension according to the maximum principal strain theory and according to maximum principal strain sigma t is equal to so sigma 1 you can see both are tensile therefore sigma 1 is plus 100 sigma 2 is plus 50 this is option b question if the maximum principal stress sigma 1 is 60 and sigma 2 sigma 3 are 0 acting on a cube of unit dimension then the maximum stress energy stored in it is what so shear stress energy formula 1 by 12 into g this is our formula so now we know sigma 2 sigma 3 they are equal to 0 so if i substitute the value of sigma 1 which is equal to 60 i'll get 1 by 12 into g into uh, 2 sigma 1s are there so i can say 2 sigma 1 square so this will become 1 by 12 g into 60 into 60 right so 2 into 60 into 60 so this becomes 
by G. So your answer is option B. So with this we come to the end of the video. I hope you found it useful. In case you did, please do like, share it to your friends and show some support by commenting down below. Thank you so much guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.